Greetings all, Last Outrider here with a What is the Horus Heresy series? A lot of questions about that. And <gasps> Happy Australian Day. Yes, that's really a thing. Why is that important for this video? Because 13 years ago, in 2003, I took part in the 13th Black Crusade worldwide campaign. And at that point in time, I was doing a little walkabout in Gippsland, Australia. To celebrate that, I dug out my oilskin duster that I was wearing at that time, drinking a strongbow while eating a meat pie with an Anzac for dessert. Yes, I know it's not April, but I like cookies. And finally, what Australian party would be complete without? Yeah. Now, we go on to it. We shall start with the Eye of Terror. Since the time of the fall, our race has been haunted by what we, in our reckless pursuit of hedonistic indulgence, gave birth to. Though our dreams once overturned worlds and quenched suns, we are now but fitful shadows clinging to the edge of existence. All the stars in the sky cannot blot out the hateful glare of the red moon's eye. The birthing place of the great enemy pulses with all the malice of a demon that is dreaming. Casting its shadow over all we have ever done and all we ever shall. Every twisted strand of fate and casting of the ruins leads me to this time, to this place. And it is clear that the final battle awaits me at the ancient crone worlds. A conflict the likes of which has not been seen since the Mongkai warred amongst themselves and their corpse of a seer fell to his traitorous son, is coming, and all my steps lead towards it. No matter what, no matter that I walk other paths, I see the stars stained red with blood of the Mongkai, and, though their wars do not concern me, and I would gladly let them destroy one another, I know that to avoid this fight is to condemn my race to inevitable doom. And though all I see is darkness, I know that I will not flinch from my destiny. Eldrad Ulthwan, Farseer of Ulthway Craft World. Mm -hmm. History of the Cadian Gate, the gateway to the Eye of Terror. To fully understand the Cadian people and their way of life, it is necessary to go back 10,000 years to a time lost in legend, a time of war and blood known as the Horus Heresy. The Emperor and his progeny, the Primarchs, stood shoulder to shoulder and carved a realm amongst the stars in a time of heroes. Each Primarch led a legion of the Emperor's finest soldiers, genetically enhanced warriors known as the Space Marines, and fought battles beyond number to liberate human space from the clutches of aliens chaos, and all manner of terrible foes. Each of the Primarchs was a superhuman figure, gods amongst men. But like men, they could also be prey to jealousy, bitterness, and vanity. 
such was the fate of war master Horus, the emperor's most favored son and primarch of the Luna Wolves. Chaos had corrupted Horus so subtly and gradually that he had not recognized his descent into evil until it had already consumed him. Such was Horus's skill in manipulating others to do his bidding that he corrupted fully half of the legions to his cause and led them in rebellion against the emperor. As hostilities erupted, it became clear that the rot had spread much further than anyone could have believed possible. As regiment after regiment of the imperial army declared for Horus, the Collegius of Adeptus Mechanicus split apart in rebellion, and entire Titan legions unfurled banners with blasphemous ruins of the chaos gods upon them. Horus attacked without mercy, driving the forces of his once brother space marines before him. Before long, Horus's advance had breached the heart of the emperor's realm. His warships had defeated Battlefield Solar and smashed the lunar defenses, leaving Terra virtually unprotected. The hordes of chaos landed on the holy soil of Terra, traitor space marines, shambling mutants, and cultists beyond number. The battle waged for many weeks, with the death toll spiraling into the millions. Everywhere, the forces of the emperor were pushed back, choking the halls of the imperial palace with dead as they fought for every yard of ground. Eventually, the traitors breached the final walls of the palace, and the end looked certain. Horus was a master strategist, but it was at this point that he made a fatal error. Knowing that imperial reinforcements in the shape of the Dark Angels and the Space Wolves were nearing, he knew he had to end the siege of the Emperor's palace soon. Horus moved his battle barge into low orbit and ordered his shields lowered. Whether this was a reckless gamble, or the last of Horus's humanity surfacing, will never be known. But faced with such an opportunity, the Emperor could not afford to miss this chance to take the fight to Horus himself. The Emperor and two of his most devoted primarchs, Sanguinis of the Blood Angels and Rogel Dorn of the Imperial Fists, teleported onto Horus's flagship with their most trusted warriors. They found a craft warped by the powers of chaos, barely recognizable as having been forged by human hands. Diabolical sorceries scattered the Emperor's force throughout the ship. And then, the Emperor finally came face to face with Horus. He found the War Master standing above the broken body of Sanguinius. The Emperor fought Horus in every way imaginable. Physically spiritually and psychically, with the war-torn planet below as the prize for the victor. The battle was long, but eventually the emperor was able to defeat Horus, though it was at the cost of much of his humanity. At the battle's conclusion, the Emperor's body was little more than a broken shell. Rogel Dorn found the Emperor's shattered body 
and returned him to earth. Whereupon he ascended to the golden throne that sustains his life force to this very day. The defeated traitor forces collapsed with the death of Horus and fled in disarray from the gates of Terra that had proved to be just beyond their grasp. Some loyalist forces rallied and gave chase, but most remained on Terra to consolidate their great victory. Many rebels were put to the sword, but the majority of the traitor legions escaped to the realm of space known as the Eye of Terror, that region of space where reality and insanity collide and the raw energy of the warp pours into real space in a swirling maelstrom. Here, the gods of chaos rule over uncounted planets, all warped to their own evil aspects. And this is where the traitor legions found refuge from their pursuers, isolated from the galaxy by powerful warp storms. Each world within the Eye of Terror is a demon planet, warped and twisted by the whims of the gods of chaos and the powerful demon princes who rule them. The traitor legions regrouped and nurtured their hatred, planning for the day when they would wreak a terrible vengeance on those who had defied them. Within the eye, time flows differently. Those same traitors who fought on terror, Terra still fight in the service of their monstrous gods. They fight against each other to prove their supremacy and against the forces of the Imperium when the warp storms calm long enough to allow them to rampage into Imperial space. The sectors surrounding the Eye of Terra are heavily marshalized to resist these invasions when they come, and none more so than Cadia, the fortress world that stands at the mouth of the one stable route leading from the Eye of Terror to the Cadian Gate. There you go. That is the introduction. Next time we shall be dealing with Fortress Cadia. Until then, bye. <laughs>